Well, everyone, thank you for being live with me tonight on the Savvy Sales Lady Live. You could be doing anything at all right now, and you chose to be with me. So I really appreciate that, and I appreciate you watching and listening. A shout out to Clayton, who told me that he is listening on his way to a meeting. So those of you that cannot listen all the way through or watch all the way through, there will be a replay right after this uh, stream ends and you can find it on YouTube. So I'm really happy to have you all join me tonight. And you know, this thing about ghosting has become a problem. Have you ever been ghosted? I think most of us have, wouldn't you agree? So, you know, this came about because I back to back one day after another, I got calls from uh, one from a friend and one from a client who was struggling with being ghosted. So I decided that I would share with you what I shared with them. And uh, there's a lot to this, but I'm hoping that we can get through it in 30 minutes. If it takes longer, it takes longer. But wouldn't you agree that most of us have been ghosted at one time in our life? If it's not prospects or leads, <laughs> even worse, family members, right? So in this video, we'll be addressing the prospect who seems to be stuck in the sales process and then all of a sudden goes completely cold. Now, what I'm not going to do in this video is address the cold call that doesn't get returned or a cold email that doesn't get answered. That's really an entirely different discussion and a different way to handle unresponsive cold call prospects. But today we're going to deep dive into addressing the prospect who is simply stuck. You've had many conversations. Um, you've been talking back and forth and then all of a sudden the prospect goes completely cold. So before we dive into it though, I want to give you a little gift and uh, let me get there. And this is a download. I want you to go to the YouTube description area of the video after the show where you can download the four weeks sales playbook. Yes, it's in the description area of the video. So that's my little gift for you for watching. And uh, we have another comment. Oh, it's Clayton saying hi. Hi, Clayton. <laughs> so glad you can join me for the time that you can. All right. So let me put that up again. Download the four week sales playbook. The link is in the description area. All right. Let me turn off the music. Thought we would warm up to a little warm and cozy piano before we delve into it deep. So why are you being ghosted? All right. That's the million dollar question, right? Before we go into the why though, let's first define what it means to be ghosted. Okay. So I'm not talking about a few attempts to reach the prospect. So it's ghosting is not a few attempts to reach the prospect. Most salespeople only reach out a few times and then they make the wrong assumption that the prospect isn't interested. So they quit reaching out or they'll think that they're being ghosted. So when the, the two people that contacted me about ghosting and could I help them with that? The first question I asked was, how many times did you attempt to reach out? Because did you know 84% of top sales professionals communicate with prospects across 
two to four channels and they'll make anywhere from seven to 10 touch points. So what do I mean by touch points? Well, a touch point could be an email that you're sending um, a value um, article to them that you thought of them. Here's a value article for you. It could be a text message for a follow-up. It could be a phone call. It could be responding to a social media post or seeing them on social media and commenting on their social media. Top professionals do this quite a bit across two to four channels. There's all kinds of ways to connect with that prospect. And I suspect, like I talked to these two people last week, you know, are they doing these things? And I got to tell you, even in my coaching and training, I got to tell you, the answer usually is no. We always, you know, think in this traditional way to communicate, which is phone call and email. Um but I want to encourage you to try texting and responding to their social media or you putting out social media um, touch points. <clears throat> now, I know you're thinking, oh, my gosh, how can I do all of this? I run a business or I'm on appointments all day. How in the world can I do all of this? You have to be very strategic about your day. And I have talked about this a million times. Uh, and that is you just have to plug it into your schedule that you're going to do this. I mean, literally, it takes what? A few seconds to send a text message. It takes maybe five seconds to compose a post and put up a social media post. If you do a graphic, you know, it could take you a minute. But it's just a minute. And somehow we have in our minds, it's an all day thing. And it's really, really not. So let's get back to why are you being ghosted? Why? So as I alluded earlier, let me caution you. Don't make assumptions. There could be literally a million reasons why a prospect hasn't returned your call, email, text message, whatever it is. And you don't know any of them, not one. <laughs> so don't assume the prospect is not interested. And I'm going to get back to that in a minute. Matter of fact, I meant to throw up here for you. This is what we're going over. Why, what to do, how to prevent it, and don't assume. And then I have one more thing to show you. This is the four-week sales creator workshop, uh, or workbook, I'm sorry, that I created for you as a free giveaway. So, you know, I want you to be sure and download this. It's in the link is in the description area of the video right now. So be sure that you do download this. But let's get back to why you're being ghosted. So assumptions kill sales. And again, I'll talk more about that. But here's what to do. Okay, this is the most important part that you really want to hear, right, is what to do. You're being ghosted. You don't know why you're being ghosted. And now I'm cautioning you not to make assumptions on why. It could be a million different reasons. So what to do? Make another attempt. And if you still don't have a reply in 48 hours, I want you to do this. And this is what I told the two people to do. One sent it in a text message and the other one sent it in, in, in an email. And that is sending a final email or a final text. 
you know, John, I've reached out to you quite a few times and uh, I haven't received a response. Perhaps this is just an incredibly busy time for you. I don't want to continue to bother you. So this will be my final message. However, if you've been meaning to contact me, here's my phone number. And then send it, send it. In both situations, the people that I talked to about this recently said within five to 10 minutes, they got a response. One response through the text message that this person sent, they said, oh, I'm sorry, I I've been swamped. I meant to get back to you. Can we have a phone conversation today at such and such time? The other one that sent the email got an email back within 30 minutes. And it was, you know, I, I know I went silent. There was a death in our family. I should have, I should have reached out and told you, if you can give me a week, uh, we'll set something up for next Monday. So you just don't know, folks, what is going on in people's lives. I've had it happen to me where someone will ghost me and I'll send that final message and not all the time, but I'll tell you it happens enough of the time that I do send it and I'll hear back from the person. Now, Chris Voss, I don't know if you know Chris Voss or not, but if you don't, he's someone you should get to know. Um, he is the founder of Black Swan Group. Chris Voss was an FBI negotiator, and he, he's written um, books about how to negotiate with people. When Chris Voss suspects that he's being ghosted, he sends a very simple text message. And it just, it, it, it's very direct and to the point. I haven't heard from you. Are you still interested? <laughs> haven't heard from you. Are you still interested? And he also teaches some other just very direct, quick text messages to send. And invariably, oh, no, 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 I am it's just this or that's been going on. So keep that in mind. This is why. You never want to make assumptions, okay? So how to prevent it? Let's talk about that. So here's some thoughts about how you can prevent being ghosted. Sometimes it's just something that you cannot have any control over, like someone had a death in the family, or maybe there was a disruption in the office that you have no idea, no idea whatsoever that it's going on. Especially if you're selling within companies, I've got a good tip for you. So hang in there with me. What I want you to do, whether you're selling B2C, which is business to consumers, kitchen table sales, like we used to call in the insurance industry, or whether you're business to business sales, it doesn't matter. Look back on the sales process, okay? Look and see, did you make any shortcuts? Did you miss a step in the sales process? Did you make an assumption that you shouldn't have made and have you made enough touch points? So let me give you an example. When I was in the group benefits arena, there was a very long sales cycle. It could be six months to a year before a deal closed. And it's because of when group benefits were rolled out. They were always rolled out at the first of the year or in the middle of the year in June. So those were the only two selling cycles during that year time. So you had to be very conscious of all the touch points and reach outs you were doing to prospects. 
okay? A year is way too long to only occasionally reach out. You know, I reached out every other week. Every other week for a year. I teach if you have a shorter sales cycle than that, you should never go longer than 48 hours. Right? You should never go longer than a 40, 48 hours, especially if you're selling B to C. If you're selling to um, life insurance or like Clayton does, um, solar sunrooms, you want to make sure that that is narrowed down where you're following up within 48 hours. So I want you to look at that sales process and just kind of, did you have enough touch points? Did you make any shortcuts? Was there anything that you could identify that could have alerted you that you were about to be ghosted? Are you sure you identified all the decision makers? Now, here's another true story. Something that I've heard when coaching and something that happened to me many times where I'm talking to a mid-level manager who leads me to believe they're the only decision maker. And then they stall and they stall and they stall uh, ghosting me or just contact me in a week or contact me on Friday. That, that whole stall process. Nine times out of 10, what it is, is they don't have the budget and they're trying to find the money or they're not the only decision maker and they're trying to get the other decision makers to buy in. Now, why would someone do that? Because they want to be the one in power. It sure doesn't help you to be left in the dark. But, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many times I experienced that. Even though I asked the question, who else uh, do I need to talk to about bringing them in on making the decision? Who else is, is out there? And, oh, no, no, I'm the one that does it. You know, after it's happened to you a couple of times, you realize, okay, they're bluffing. They're trying to hold the power, and you know that isn't true. So this especially happens in B2B sales, so business-to-business -business sales. And here's the key that I started doing, and that is aligning myself with someone else in the company that could help give me insider information. Whether it was a salesperson, whether it was another manager from another department, that would make sense for me to have had to talk to them as well. Okay. Do you see what I mean? So especially if you're selling B2B, you want to make sure that you find someone in that business that will coach you through who would be the right people to talk to, or they could give you information. Did some kind of disruption happen with the company? Is there something I need to know? It's so valuable. I experienced this last year when I was trying to get into uh, another company to train. And uh, I had developed a relationship with another rep and they guided me through the whole process. You know, it was, it made it a lot easier. I can tell you. And I did that in my group benefits days too. If you've got someone that you can align with. So I really want to encourage you to find that person, especially if you are in a stuck process, but before your prospect gets stuck, Find that person ahead of time. Okay. So then the next question I want to ask you is this. 
did you build trust with the prospect? Okay, think about that. Did you really build trust with the prospect? It could be a trust issue. And if, here's another one. I, I just, I did a short video about this the other day. Did you go ahead and give the prospect a proposal or quote ahead of time? And now you can't reach them. Now they're not returning your calls, your emails, or your follow-up. Okay? Don't send a proposal or quote over an email until you have set up a virtual meeting and or a face-to-face -face meeting. I get you won't be able to deliver every proposal and quote this way, but you want to pick the most important ones that you can deliver the proposal and quote to this way. When you do it that way, they don't have the advantage of taking that quote and then going to their current vendor and saying, hey, I got this price. If you want to keep my business, you'll need to match it. That happened all the time in group benefits. So I had to get wise with my top prospects. I hand delivered the proposal ahead uh, uh, instead of just emailing them out. And I would sit and go through the proposal step by step and then close the deal. That was when I closed. Okay. So I want to encourage you to do that with your top prospects, because if you have built up trust and they want to work with you, they should see the value of sitting down and going over that, pro that proposal and that um, uh, quote face to face. Or at, at the very least, over a virtual conference. If they say, well, just go ahead and email it to me. I always say, still to this day, I will say to them, well, my process is that we go through this together. What would be a good time for you to sit down and have a face-to-face -face, or if they're in another state, a virtual meeting with me? And I will keep going back to that and keep going back to that. I don't release it. Being a sales coach, <laughs> what has happened to me is sometimes people pretend they're a prospect because they're trying to get my pricing. So I put them through a whole different process than I do if I'm selling to a business. If it's an individual coming to me and I know they're legit, uh, that's different. But if they're hesitant answering questions and they just keep asking me to send something, they have to have a 30-minute meeting with me first. And then I ask a series of questions to flush out, is this real or are they just trying to get my pricing? So, oh, yeah you get real smart real quick. <laughs> so, you know, let's go through that really quick again. Look back on your sales process. Did you make any shortcuts? Are you sure you identified all the decision makers? Did you build solid trust with the prospect and then find someone early on in the sales process to align with that will be your coach in that prospect's company, okay? So let's get to the final one, and that is don't assume. So do we have any more comments? It doesn't look like it. Um, if you do, if you have any comments, put them in the comment section. And I will answer your comments. But let's get down to, whoops, sorry. 
assumptions. I caution myself making assumptions. I'll be honest with you. It still happens with me. It's just a natural thing that we all make these assumptions. But before you decide that, well, let me say it this way. Being ghosted doesn't necessarily mean they're not interested. Okay. If you've reached out a couple of times and you haven't heard back, that doesn't mean anything. All right. People's inboxes are just stuff full these days. Uh, matter of fact, the other day I missed five emails. Okay. It was nuts. I missed five emails. It happens. And uh, instead of making the assumption that, and I actually had a person say this to me, well, he didn't call me back. I mean, isn't that good? Isn't, isn't that a good enough sign he's not interested? No. <laughs> Just because he call, didn't call you back when you were expecting him to call back doesn't mean he's not interested. So many salespeople walk away from good leads and good prospects because they assume they're not interested. And when I want to go back to that quote, 84% of sales professionals, the top sales professionals, they follow up seven to 10 times, seven to 10 touch points. They don't assume they're being ghosted. They know people's lives are busy and life happens to all of us. So when you make assumptions that they're not interested, that's insecurity on your part as a salesperson. And I want you to be more confident that it's not you. <laughs> it's not your product. It's not your offer. It's not your quote or proposal. You just have to find out by reaching out again. And then if you still don't hear anything, send the final email. And then um, see what happens. I had someone get back to me six months later and say, I am so sorry, Christine. You reached out and reached out and reached out and reached out. And it was just a bad time in my life. I'm ready now. You don't know. I am such a big believer that timing is everything. And this is what happens. If you're the type of salesperson that pushes, you will push that relationship away. Everything you built up, you will push it away if you start to push for the sale. So do what Chris Foss does, you know. Um, he sends us text and says, um, now I forgot what it was. <laughs> it's very direct. And it's something like, uh, I haven't heard from you. Are you still interested? It's a yes and no question, right? It's a closed-ended question. And you ask closed-ended questions when the deal is stalled. You want to know where you stand with that prospect. So if you get a no, it's not the end of the world. At least you know and you can move on. If you do get a no, you can text back and say something like, can you tell me more about your decision? That's what Jim Camp teaches. Can you tell me more about your decision? I love using that because you would be surprised how that opens up the conversation, right? Tell me more about your decision. I have learned so much when I have asked that simple question. It's not an aggressive question. It's a curiosity question. And I have said over and over and over in sales, you have to have curiosity. <laughs> You have to be naturally curious. If someone says no to me, I want to know 
Well, what, what formed that decision, right? So keep all of these tips in mind. And I want to encourage you to go and download on my YouTube channel, this four week sales creator workshop or workbook. I mean, I keep saying workshop uh, and it's in the description area below. And I want to encourage you to look at this because this gives you a game plan over the next four weeks that you can repeat every single month. What it does is it helps you focus on what the important things are in sales. Because so many times, just like being ghosted, we get so caught up in the little things that we're missing the big, bigger picture. And you all know I am a huge believer of plugging everything into a schedule. Oh, Kayla says, hi. <laughs> Hello, Kayla. Thank you for joining, Kayla. Thank you. And uh, be sure and download this. You know, even if you're not in sales, maybe you're an account manager. Okay. This will still help you. Account managers don't believe they're in sales, but they really are. And um, one of the things that I want to provide on an ongoing um, process with everyone is to give you tools that you can use right away. And if you notice up here, I said written by Christine Harrington, not AI. <laughs> I had someone text message me and ask me, is that content AI? And I said, no, it's original. It's me. <laughs> so everyone, this is everything that you need to know about being ghosted. And I hope this helps you moving forward. If you have any questions that you want to send me, you can send it to, do I have my email up here? I don't. It's real easy. Christine at ChristineHarrington.com. Christine at ChristineHarrington.com. I'd be happy to take your questions and answer them either on my next live or on um uh, through email. So the entire month of April, I'm doing live videos at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn on Tuesdays and Thursdays all through April. I've got a bunch of things planned in May and ongoing. So I really appreciate you watching. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate you reaching out. And remember, Sales is a journey, not a quick trip around the block. I'll see you all later. Thank you for spending time with me tonight. Bye-bye. Oh, we got another comment. Oh, Kayla says, that's awesome. Thanks, Kayla. And I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.